Yeah, working this time. All right. Sorry about that, guys. So I'll erase that old video. Uh, so what I was saying before, and I got all interrupted, was that we're going to attempt to do the one-day build of the Man Roddy, but the P Bandai version of it. So this is cool because they actually made it very easy for us to get the parts from this extra part set, which a lot of these came with uh, Iron Blood Orphans. So really, all we need is those two parts, the legs, which is really like four or six parts. Not too bad. This is live, so customers can come in. Stores open, phone will ring. I'm not going to answer that, though. But uh, sorry, whoever's on the phone. I'm not going to answer it right now. So this was an idea Paul and I came up with, inspired by, you know, one-day builds like Adam Savage on from Mythbusters does a one-day builds on YouTube. And, you know, everybody thinks it's so hard to customize. I want to show you how simple it is. It's not going to be my best build because I'm doing it in one day. And like most, you know, TV shows, a little prep work beforehand. So I already uh, cut all the pieces out, got them off the runner, most of them, sand them down. And most of them are ready to go. I actually sealed the seams on this one yesterday, so seam line ran right down the middle. Looks pretty good. Hopefully it's all gone. Feeling like it's all gone, but it ran straight down. You can slightly see where it was. It's one of those things until I hit it with paint. I won't really, really know how well I did, but I think it'll be good enough. Uh, so we will go through the normal processes. I am using Tamiya paint for a couple reasons. A, it's really accessible. Most good hobby shops will carry it. Even Hobby Lobby carries it. So you shouldn't have a problem finding these colors. I'm only using hopefully five colors. Um, the other reason is I'm gonna mix it with uh, leveling thinner from Mr. Hobbies, which will make it dry faster. So I can actually try to get this done in one day because dry time will be the normal problem. So. Usually, you probably do a build like this in a couple of days on something really dry, especially the primer. But we're going to blast through it and see how it comes out. Um, I'm not one for waiting for paint to dry anyway. So, um, if you don't know what this looks like from the anime, or what the P Bandai one looked like, uh, let's see here, get you a picture. So, this is pretty much how it appeared. In the anime nice art here of it much more interesting than the uh, green space type version of it this was the uh, set they sold for P Bandai came with uh... yep uh, Inferno so let's see endless Inferno he says to me it dries in about 30 minutes or hope it dries even faster but we're gonna crack through it with a level of thinner, times will be faster. Big problem today in painting is it's super humid. So when I crack that back door, I'm gonna get all the humidity in. Uh, I was having a little bit of problems with the whites yesterday, so I'll figure that out by the time I'm ready to paint white. So this was the set that was sold, two of them together. I'm guessing it was probably about 3,500 yen in Japan. And you know, when we get it to the West, you're probably looking at like $50 when it first came out. If you go on Amazon right now, it is selling for $78 for the set. And both of these guys are like $12 kits, plus the $8 expansion part. So you are paying out the butt for that on eBay. I think it goes for about $66, bucks, and I'm not sure if that includes shipping or not. So this will be a way to show you guys. It's easy. You can do it yourself. Build up some P-Bandai. A lot of times, and what's cool about it is, you know, if you have to scrap two kits together to get the parts you need for your P Bandai, well, that gives you extra parts to build something later with, you know? So you're already collecting parts, so you can start doing real kit bashes. But this, doing P Bandai ones is cool because you already have the concept done for you. All you gotta do is make it work. Figure out how it all goes together. So, I'm gonna do a little seam filling on these arm parts because... I already did the legs. I figured I would show, you know, aim might break it. So here's the joints. I'm doing my joints in German gray, color I really like. 
Um, most of the stuff on here that's going to be a darker color. So, like, in here I have to fill this in. It's going to be the only parts I don't really need to be any taping going on. I'll have to tape this off and fill that in with the German gray. My feet, I think I'm going to put a little bit of black in the German gray so we get a darker one. So we'll do the feet, so you know, because I want them to look a little different, like they had an extra coating on them or something. And guns will probably be that same colorway as the feet. And I think I'm going to do this big weird hatchet weapon in the same color too. Because, yeah, that's pretty much how it looks in the pictures. So I might do the hatchet and the darker the German gray with a little black, and then maybe the gun with just German gray. Mix it up a little bit so they're not all the same. Uh, so these parts already came in a pretty dark color. I'll probably just brush paint the joint in here real quick because I can't airbrush it at this point. But I'll just brush paint that in. It's going to have, I don't know if it's going to be visible. I'll have to look at this as we go along. Look at it really closely, but this might only be visible from the back, so I'll just brush paint that in, fix that up. But this all had to be sealed. And I can probably brush paint this thruster of the match because that will also be that German gray color, which this this is already pretty close. So let me seal the seam. Painted these in the German gray about a half hour ago. Very dry. I didn't even bother priming them because I feel like put those in or figure out how to get situated so when you're painting something especially if you know exactly the colorways you're doing you can you don't have to build it first I personally like to build stuff because I usually just come up with colorways on my own and figure out where colors to go but since I'm working from our existing information I just, I didn't even build it first. I just separated all my parts where they go. So it's going to be all German gray over here. We got all the, these purpley colors are going to be German gray. All right. Uh, I think the guns are going to be German gray. And then the weapon and the feet will be German gray mixed with a little bit of black. And then these parts will be the very light tan cream color which I'm going to try to make from white and a little bit of flesh. Hopefully it will give me a cream color. It's funny because I have some colors I really like in other paints, but I wanted to make sure the paints were accessible to everybody. Vallejo had a color that I really liked. I'm passing on that to go with the, the make my own colors with Tamiya. So that will be interesting. Um, this is going to be interesting too because this, and this version should be green looks like. So I might have to figure out how to do the eyes. So that'll be interesting. Those little triangles will be fun. But we'll figure it out as we go. That might not get done today, though. Eyes might be left off. So, oh, did I miss a piece? The bottom of the face, as you can see here, also needs to be orange. So I need to make sure that oh, looks like it is separated correctly. All right. I'll double check them before I start painting that. So I'm going to keep them separated through the priming stage. So I'm going to mix it up because that could be <laughs> a big mistake when they're all the same color. Uh, pretty much always adjust the prime. Definitely helps your paint to adhere. Gives you a base color. Uh, especially in this kind of case where you have all these different colors. If you didn't prime, just put your colors on top of this stuff. It's like... If I'm trying to put a cream on top of green, it's going to take me so many layers, and that green will still radiate through a little bit. So it's going to be like a weird color of cream. Um, same thing with the orange. Orange over green is probably going to be disgusting if you just did it straight. And then you got two shades of green, so you could get all kinds of weird combinations coming out. So that's why you want to prime so you have a uniform base that you're painting on. All right, so looking at this... Big fan of the uh, simplicity and good builds of the IBO kits in both a 100 and high grade. So they did a real nice job with IBO. 
great kits if you're just getting into Gunpla. I would suggest them. They're affordable and they're really easy. Um, if you still want to stay in high grades after that, I would definitely suggest Origins because they are probably the best or are the best. Great detail, nice little bit of a uh, posability, a little extra movement in the feet and stuff like that. So really good kits. All right, so we need to get rid of this seam. This is what we're trying to get rid of when we close these together. And this is always nasty when you got like dips and stuff like that. So you gotta be very careful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my glue in be where the flat parts are, not where the dips are, because I don't want to mess with trying to sand that out. It's gonna be a problem. Uh, hold on, somebody trying to call me. Damn telemarketers all day long, every day. All right. So, using the uh, the thin, because I'm prone to make mistakes, and I might need to break it open again. I wouldn't use the yellow, the orange bottle, because that would really seal it together. In case I make a mistake, I'm gonna be able to pull it apart, and the stove will be very hard to pull apart. Just enough so you get ch it, it squeezes. You don't want to overflow, but you want to squeeze right up to the surface level. And if it overflows, that's all right because you can always sand it down. But especially the uh, green tap. Ah, see, messing up. Got leaking over the edges and touched it. All good since we're painting. I'm not really scared about that. That can be sanded right out. I'll squeeze that one together real good. Move on to this next one. Now, I'm going to use my Ulfa knife to do the initial sanding because it's super sharp and I just want to plane it, I guess is the word. I want to get both sides perfectly even. So I need to remove a good amount, but I want it very accurate where I'm removing it from. So if I sand, I might sand down some of the, the sphericalness of the part, and I don't want to do that. So now I'm just running my finger over to figure out which side is the high side. So this side is the higher side. So I need to kind of like plane that off a little bit with my knife. On this side, they are pretty even. So this is going to be more of a scraping technique than uh, anything. I'm just trying to scrape down the higher side so it's very even with the uh, lower side. If I did the sandpaper, I might take off a lot more material, especially if I did it in the higher grit. I want to keep it in a very controlled area. This part right here, pretty good. Sorry guys, can't really read all your comments because I'm trying to do this at the same time. But when I get a chance, I see some conversations going on there. Let's see if I can pull it up on the screen here.
What up, Gundam Nerd? So again, just scraping along to see if I can fit a lip there. Trying to take it down. Just to zoom in a little bit more here. There we go. There we go. This side looks pretty good. Though I did run, run the uh, glue over a little bit and got my fingerprint in there. So I'm going to scrape that out. So, just want to big up Gundam Nerd for uh, starting that whole Builder Support Builders movement. And I guess this is an entry for that, you know. should hashtag it. Remember to do that when I uh, post it up permanently. But yeah, you know, get out there, help people understand how to do this. Demystify it. You know, in my story here, a lot of people just like, who kind of like walk-ins will be like, Oh, wow, that must be so hard. I can never do that. Uh, yeah, you can. Unless you got, like, you know, no thumbs or something. I don't know. Anybody can do it. It's how far you want to take it. So right now I'm trying to make sure all my um, panel lines are still there, too. So just run the blade through there, making sure it's still there. Chisel will be better, but, or actually a sharp blade tip would be better. I'm not sure what the rest of my blade tips are. Chisel will be best, though. But, you know, not everybody got chisel, so we're going to make it work. Just making sure all the lines are still there. There's a little spacing there. In that deep panel line. Nobody's gonna notice that, especially when I put the wash in. I'm not gonna kill myself over that one. <laughs> so, on that side, I think we're pretty good. You can still see the line, but I'm pretty sure the paint will fill all that in. Hey, how's it going? Nice, so we just got a shipment in. I'll be posting that up in between uh, some of this paint on this kit. All right, so here I'm not happy with. This is too much space. 
Uh, the size of them pretty good. What I'm gonna do is I also like to use this uh, plastic putty, which is like the consistency of toothpaste, and it's water-based. It dries pretty quick, and I just want to use it if I have any gaps left, just to fill in that gap. So I had a little divot there I could kind of feel. So push that in there. Break the excess off. And then we'll sand that down when it dries. But that's looking pretty good. I think I'm happy with that. So even if you didn't paint, that's almost passable. Almost. Did a little better on the, uh, the darker parts. They had a little more ooze out of it. All right, so this is my more raised side on that side. And again, this side actually came out pretty good, except for at the top. see just a little bit the knife is pushing off not crazy and I can control it very controlled in one area What up, Alex? So now when I uh, cut this piece out, Took a little weird divot there, I guess. A little raise, a little divot. Didn't sand enough when I originally sanded my parts, but this is a chance to fix that now. And honestly, it's not that bad. If I can't sand that out, we'll just put some of the putty in there too. Now, of course, the problem with working with circular stuff is you always have to make sure you're not destroying the, the circle, the cylinder shape. Have something looking all lopsided. Can't say enough about how much sharper Olfen knives are. So, if you're one of my customers in the area, I will be trying to get those in as soon as possible. I get again from Japan. Uh, so my Japan shipment it shouldn't be too far off. Um, anywhere else in the country, I believe Lowe's or Home Depot 
even has this size. If not, they have their slightly bigger one, which is also good. But this one has a weird angle on it. Chip the tip off of it, but still su super sharp. Right now, I've probably been running this blade for a while. Um, cutting all types of stuff. At least two months, and it's probably still sharper than a Zacto knife. Yeah, one of my regulars and the other day didn't really believe in it. He had to borrow it to work on something real quick. He was like, oh, now I'm a believer. <laughs> so Kevin, <laughs> your first gunplay, you already started sealing seams. Good for you, man. Take baby steps though. You don't have to go and uh seal seams on the first one, but I, I I like the effort that you just jumped in, like I'm doing everything first time. So definitely helps with the overall look, but it really helps when you're painting because you don't have to see any of those seam lines. If you're just building it straight, it's going to be really hard to make that seam really disappear. can be done, but I don't know if it's worth the effort. But if you're painting, you're going to do all that work painting, you might as well make it look the best you can. And the good thing is, if you just got into this, you start doing real grades and master grades, a lot less uh, seeming, at least on the newer ones, because they're making sure the panels or the panels meet are the natural uh, panel lines, not seam lines. Now, what I'm noticing right here, I'm not gonna get crazy over this thing, but because it would be like a five-day build, but right here, when the two pieces connected, there's a little difference in uh, height. And that could bother me if I was trying to do for competition, but I am not going to worry about that much. Take one pass out. If I can't get it, I can't get it. Yeah. I'm not trying to mess it up more than. All right, so it's looking pretty good. I think we got two decently sealed sides here. on the bottom of me. Try a little bit higher of a grit, see if I can take that down some. They have thing, things called uh, sanding needles, so have been good for this. They got right in there. Eh, looking good. Let's we'll see when we put paint on it. <laughs> Alright, so. Two sealed up legs. Hopefully I did those right or I'm screwed. And I'll be breaking that apart. But, ah, uh, too early. I 
think it's funny. All right, sealed arms, sealed legs. I think that was the only problems where panelized would have been obvious. So I will get back with you because I got to clip a ton of clips together, and I'll catch you guys in a little bit. After I get those, and we'll go back and we'll prime. Start the priming process. See how that comes. Primer was flowing real good to yesterday when I was doing test run. So that was humid today. We're like low 90s in uh, South Jersey today. So hopefully that'll work. I'm worried about the whites later, but we'll figure that out when we get to them. So it's going to be a pretty basic paint job. I'm not going to do pre-shading, but I'm going to do a little pre-highlighting. So my primer is going to be gray, and I'm going to run some highlights in white. I think this thing's called xenophobing, where you kind of like xeno shading, where you top down. So where the cream is, I'm gonna definitely run a little white underneath that, under those parts, so it pops a little bit more on the high spots. But my goal is to keep it very subtle. I had a spoon I tested on last night that I wanted to show you, but here we go. So if you can see this on the spoon here, on the highest points of the spoon, I put the white down and there's a slight gradient from the shadows over here and the shadows down here to the high point here. That's pretty subtle, which is what I want. And I'm going to do that along the top part of the chest right in here. I want this part to be like the darker grays down here, so it'll be just orange on top of gray because that would be shaded. So all in this area here will probably be uh, a little white highlight, a little white highlight. Mm, probably along this upper part here too, across the, the head's white, but uh, so I'll leave this part probably plain. Definitely, well, the head's gonna be cream color. So where all the cream is on the higher parts, I'm gonna do the white highlights underneath so that it'll have a little bit of a more highlighted effect and I won't probably do any highlights so oh, probably on the top of the knees here yeah top of the knees maybe a little bit on the skirt here leaving this part of the skirts the way they are uh, gotta decide if I want to run it along one side of the arm to kind of show that size raise not sure yet see how well the white's flowing when I spray it I'm only going to use one airbrush, my Badger Chrome. No, Renegade. I'm going to use the Renegade today. So that's a medium needle, or I guess it would be fine. And then the Chrome is the, like extra fine. Um, so I figure most people, when they get to airbrush, they usually have only one airbrush. So I will run it with the medium needle, medium to small needle airbrush. Uh, running all my stuff through their primers, paints, and clear coats will all go through there. We will only be using hopefully five paints. Like I said earlier, the flesh colors to turn this into a cream, white into a cream. Uh, the black is to darken up the German gray for the feet, the uh, hatchet weapon. And then the orange is obviously the orange. So five colors, primer, top coat, a little bit of glue, alligator clips, obviously your sanding tools, and that's about it in the airbrush. So not too crazy of a setup. You could hand brush this. That same technique works. You just got to learn how to fade with hand brushes. So the highlighting technique works too. Um, you could do that. You could hand brush it. When you hand brush, especially with this stuff, you got to keep it really thin and do lots of layers, which is why I don't like the hand brush. If you don't, if you try to lay it on thick, you most likely will get heavy brush strokes. So I will be back in a couple minutes after I clip these all together and get the uh, primer and the hand brush already thinned. All right. 